I'm going to see if you guys can see me. I don't know if you can see me yet. Uh, I have to pull it up on here so I can see if you guys can see me. But welcome, everybody, to Lure Painting Live, uh, Saturday Night Edition. I'm going to do another crawfish color. Um, it's going to be a similar design to the blue, orangish, reddish one I did. But I'm going to, and I don't think I ever did that one live. I was kind of trying to keep that uh, design on the down low, but I am running out of ideas. <laughs> So I think I'm going to do, I have another reference photo that I pulled off of Pinterest. Somebody had done like a soft plastic uh, grub of some kind to mimic a crawfish color. And they had a great reference photo that they posted. So I'm going to use that picture uh, and I am going to make it a crepe bait color um, the best that I can. So we'll see what happens. It's a kind of like a tan brown uh green pumpkin uh like an umber reddish color to it uh with a little bit of orangey colors and i have a fly in here i'm sorry if i keep swatting at that stupid thing but it's probably gonna happen so let me pull up uh the feed on here so i can see everybody's comments hope you're all doing well uh i don't i gotta see if i can if you guys can see me or not because it looks like my camera is pointing way down but i can't this damn thing won't play. So come on. Okay. So you can uh, join me on YouTube. I'm going to go ahead and post the website and the link to the YouTube. If you rather watch it you on YouTube. Um, and then I will post the discount code as well for tonight, which will be good through Sunday night as usual. So you can get 15% off anything in stock. Um, I already have a promo going on all the time right now for 15%, an extra 15% off of clearance. I'm just discounting some things that have been in my store a little while. So it looks like you could, you can see me okay. All right, so let's get started. I already primed these. I have a wiggle wart. I get these premium wiggle warts either from Dinger Baits or Cedar Run Outdoors. Um, they do run out of stock on these quite a lot. So, um, but they're nice, they run true and um, these are one where it's definitely worth it to get the premium versions because they do run true, whereas some of the cheaper ones may not always do that. And if you ever do get a bait from me that doesn't run well or something goes wrong, please do message me because uh, if it's like a defect in the actual lure, I will replace it. If you hit a rock, <laughs> then depending on what happened to it, I, that might be another story. Um, I say that because like if I if I got a replacement lure for every rock I hit, then I would be really having a lot of lure companies upset with me. Although I usually I usually use my own, so it's kind of a non-issue. But anyway, I already primed my lures with Steinal Res by Badger. This is what I use for um, all of my water-based paints. Get this Steinal Res primer. It is a acrylic polyurethane. It's water-based. It has a little bit of a funny smell to it, so. Um, I do recommend wearing a mask when you're painting all the time. I wear a 3M respirator with a vapor cartridge, 6001 vapor cartridge. And then I also put particulate filters on the outside to um, protect my lungs. I also use my paint booth when I'm not live. It's kind of hard for you to see me when I'm live if I'm using my paint booth. And I'm using water-based when I'm painting. I use lacquer most of the time. But when I'm painting live, I use water-based. And this is the only time I ever paint without a mask. So I do, if you're gonna be doing this any length of time, I I would say definitely wear a mask. You should, you should anyways. But um, over time, this stuff can really do some serious damage to your lungs. So please take care of yourself. All right. This is uh, Wicked Detail Flat Opaque White. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put a base coat down. So Steinal Res does not substitute as a base coat. It is just a primer. It helps with it, the um, with adhesion. It'll keep your paint from uh, separating from the plastic. Water-based paints like Createx aren't really designed for plastics. They're designed for fabrics and uh, pa paper and stuff. So they don't stick that great to plastic. So if there's any way you can uh, add, you know, an additional layer of adhesion, then definitely do it. And Steinal Res will get the job done. And that's the only water-based um, adhesion primer that I know of that's, that's any good. Um, 
there's lots of nastier ones that work really good, but if you don't want to go that route, I didn't want to go that route for a long time, but I actually, um, I have a taxidermist painter friend who talked me into switching to lacquer for years because it really is nice because uh, it dries right away, but it is very nasty. So you need a lot of ventilation, a lot of protection. Uh, it's, it's, it's a bit of a, a process, it's not something that you should do unless you have the right setup for it. So most people just stick with Createx and that's totally fine. I did it for over two years and it works fine. So there's no need to switch, especially if you're doing it as a hobby. This stuff is much less toxic. You should still wear a mask. Did I say that? There are chemicals in the reducers and just the particles that you're breathing in. It's not really very good for you. So I got two warts and two 2.5 square bills. I'm probably just going to do one wart and one square bill, but uh, I always have a backup just in case I really screw up. You guys already know that if you watch me, make sure you share the feed with your friends uh, in any groups that allow you to share my feed. I appreciate the shares very much. Um, sometime this month, hopefully, we're going to be doing some big giveaways from Sugar Tick Custom Lures. Um, Shane, the owner, uh, wanted to partner with me and, uh, and do a little promo show. So he's going to be sending me some giveaways. And um, I just don't think he's gotten around to sending them yet, which is fine. Um, and so one of these days I'll be doing a show where we'll be giving away some, some gear, some lures, a bunch of stuff. I don't know. We'll see what he sends. And then I'll probably give away some of my own painted stuff and I'll paint something that he sends me too. So that'll be a fun show. I'll make sure I announce that in advance. Um, I'll give you at least a week's warning for that one. So it's not last minute, like my normal posts. Um, so I should be on pretty regularly um, unless I have something going on, you know, like with the kids or the fam or whatever. I should be on Saturdays for the foreseeable future. It's a balmy 91 in my garage at 7.15 p.m. We got up to 100 today, so that's, that's always fun stuff. <laughs> Hope you guys are doing well. Hello, Joe, David not wanting oh there we go anthony how's it going hey arthur brad hello ryan good to see you too robert hello snagging a tree branch does not count yeah i've had i usually we can get them back because chris will go into some pretty gnarly bushes and stuff to get things out but occasionally it's just way too much and i don't get them back it happens but yeah, I do that a lot too. We have a lot of rocks here though. So that's my main issue is hitting rocks. Hello, John. Walter, how's it going? Rob, hello, hello. Ryan's in Idaho. I've always wanted to go to Idaho. I have never been. I've seen some of the pictures of your clear water up there and um, I'm super jealous. We have some really good clear water lakes in Colorado, but mostly in the mountains. Down here, it's kind of muddy. Our, um, we're kind of like right in the Colorado, ew, sorry, the Arkansas River drains right into our, uh, I say Colorado River, I meant Arkansas, drains right into our reservoir. And uh, it's so low right now, it's just mud, it's so muddy. We went out to Navajo Reservoir. Has anyone ever heard of Navajo Reservoir? It is um, sort of southeast of Durango, Colorado. And if you've never been to Durango, Colorado, it's beautiful. Um, and it's a decent sized reservoir um, for Colorado anyway. There isn't a lot of water here. Um, and it's the same, it's so low. One guy at the marina told us going down four feet a day right now because they're using the water for the fires in California. And it is so low. 
luckily it's a huge lake and it's really deep so there's still a lot of there's still a lot of area but it's really hard to catch fish because it was so so muddy so we didn't we we spent a lot of time with the kids and it was still fun but we didn't catch much kind of stuff but it was still fun so hope you guys are having a good end of the summer yes Yes, Shane is great at Sugar Tick Customers. If you guys haven't um, ever ordered blanks from him, if there's any painters watching, um, he probably, he kind of goes above and beyond. I mean, a lot of these guys like Backwater Outfitting. He has very great service too. Shane um, really goes above and beyond kind of with um, giving you free stuff free gifts and fast shipping so check him out if you haven't if you're a lure painter you've probably heard of him <laughs> he's one of the main ones but he's a good dude hello rodney hey grampy how you feeling these days all recovered i'm assuming from your your issues I've seen you've been painting I saw one of your posts not too long ago if you're not hitting rocks you're not working the small mouth oh yeah we uh we have a lot that we have a ton of smallies here spots and smallies we have a large east too but not there's a lot more smallies I think in in Pueblo Reservoir than there are I don't know it's hard to say, but we catch a lot of small here. All right, so let's rinse this out. If you want to know what I was just shooting, that was Tim Gore's Bloodline by Createx Old Bone White. That is the color. And um, it's a really nice uh, natural bone color. Some people like a more yellow bone, and you know, you can make your own bone color as well. All you really need is like uh, some white, a little bit of yellow, and a little bit of brown, and you can usually, you know, come up with something close to that. I know like River to Sea uses a much more yellow bone color, and it just depends what you are going for, I guess. All right, so I'm just spraying water in here to rinse this out. As long as I don't let my paint dry in my paint cup, I can usually get it pretty clean with just water. Um, if it's black or something, sometimes I'll use a little bit of rubbing alcohol to get the black residue out because it could, you know, it'll darken any other color that you put in after it. So, okay, do you want to see the reference photo for tonight? Hello, Kevin. Oh, you know what? Sometimes you don't have any water either. Yeah, Ryan. Um, sometime we we might hit you up if we do come up there i don't know when we would ever make it because we're so yeah not this year where did grayson catch his carp it was just at pueblo they were just fishing for bass and he snagged a carp all on his own hey travis jake how's it going how's wisconsin treating you i'm going to show you guys the picture that i'm going to work off of tonight real quick so you can have an idea uh, as to whether i'm close or not if I can find my stupid photos here. Do you ever look at your apps and you just keep going through them over and over again and you can't seem to see the app you're trying to find? That's that's what happens to me on my show every single time. I'll scroll through, through here like 5 million times and I'll keep scrolling past the photos. All right, here it is. So here it is. This is the craw that I'm going to do. And um, if you guys, I'll show you on YouTube here. That's my reference picture. And there's for the Facebook watchers. Um, so it's like a green with a little bit of rusty red and orange. Um, I'm kind of, it's not going to look exactly like that because obviously my lure is not that shape. But I'm going to do my best to get close. So let's give it a shot. So let's start with the square bill. Um, I'm going to do first a little bit of orange along the bottom. And I haven't used these colors before. I got these from a friend who was not going to paint anymore. And this color is semi-opaque flame orange. And uh, well, maybe I shouldn't start with that one. Hang on. I'm rethinking this. 
Okay, I am going to do it, and we'll just tone it down with some yellow ochre if it's, like, way too wickedly bright. Uh, we'll see what happens here. It doesn't look like it's too bad. So um, this is a semi-opaque, which should be fine. I'm going to thin it a little bit. I've never used this color, but it's weird. I feel like oranges, like, it's hard to find oranges in a variety of shades with airbrush paint. And that's a universal thing between lacquer and um, water-based. It's just not that many great orange colors. So this is kind of like an apricot-like color. So that'll be fine. And then I can always go over it with some uh, like reddish tones. So I'm gonna go along the bottom of, of right here uh, with this color. And then we're gonna do the top in like more of a green pumpkin brown type color. So go nice and light, um, and I'm just kind of fanning it over the low sides here. Sorry. It gets kind of dim in here if I, my motion light goes off sometimes. So I can't see all the comments right now on, face, on Facebook because I'm using my reference photo, but I'll pop back in a minute so I can see what you guys are saying. Okay. And then I'm going to shade a little bit right here, kind of where... Um, the big plate on the crawfish is like this area. I'm going to do that in this color too, because that's kind of what the photo looks like. And this is a similar thing that I did with the blue and orangish one that I did. I'm going to follow that same kind of strategy because it really did turn out pretty good. So uh, why mess with a good thing? All right. So there's that. And then um, on the top, it really is a dark, I did blue on the top um, last time, and I'm just going to not do it on this one because this is, and honestly, on the top, it's more of a brown green. So I'm just going to kind of shade that orange up the back a tiny bit. It's a yellowish orange kind of. It's actually, I think, you know, this color should work pretty good. It's a yellowish orange, but... Unlike golden yellow, which is more yellow than, than orange, this is the opposite kind of. It's more orange than yellow. If you want to know what color this is, it is semi-opaque flame orange, auto air semi-opaque. So you can always come back and look that up. Um, or you can always PM me too if I use something you can't remember what it was. I should go back in the description and list all the colors I use so that you guys don't have to go back and look it up. This paint is actually really old, I think. I'm almost positive it's really old. I am like so, so sweaty right now. It's so hot in here. It gets cool at night though, finally, we're, we're getting down into like the 50s at night, but it's like 100 during the day. So bizarre. I think it snowed this time last year here. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, I like the warm weather. I prefer it over cold weather, but... This is kind of ridiculous. Okay, so again, just shading along the bottom and just kind of behind the gill plate area. So I'll clean this out. And then I'll clean out this. So again, this is just water and I'm just scraping any paint that's up, stuck to the sides off. I'll go back to my comments real quick just to see what I missed. Everything unpacked. Yay. Hello, Michael. Steel header fun. Yeah. John, they are on the way. Your order is on the way. Arthur is making you your green pumpkin purple. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got your order down. 
I'm going to be working on that, Anthony. I was trying to finish, or yeah, I was trying to finish up uh, something else I was working on. And we went out of town for Labor Day weekend, so I got nothing done for like five days. Okay, so next, I'm going to go back to my feed. Share the feed if you can again, guys, that the more the merrier. I know a lot of people watch later. So we're going to do some, some moss green now. Uh, this is going to be our second color, and then I'll come back and I'll shade all of these things um, till I get like the color, the shade I want. So I just that's already pre-reduced, but I added a little more because I don't want this to get too dark too fast. And then I'm also going to add, I think, some white dots on this one, but I don't know for sure yet what I'm going to do. I'm thinking. Okay, so. I'm going to go along the back and the high sides with this green. It's probably going to clog in my brush because I just know it's going to. See? I bought these big bottles of moss green and sepia from this Coast Airbrush or something. And, um, They're not the greatest. I think they might have sat on their shelf for a while before they shipped them. So I have like a lot of, you know, you know how when they get old, they get like little tiny micro chunks in them and then they don't spray over like crap. That's where I'm at with these. The black is okay. I ordered a big one in white, black, and then moss green and sepia. Cause you use those colors a lot for fish. And, uh, the sepia and the moss green, oh, they don't spray with the crap. So don't be careful with the ordering the big bottles if you don't constantly use them. Because that's what will happen. So I'm just going, again, I'm just shading in the areas that are still are still bone. I'm shading them in with a little bit of moss green, but I'm not doing it too heavy. Um, I have it thinned down pretty good and then I'm just kind of misting it over trying to keep it from getting too dark. So we'll come back and we'll shade it with a little brown just to um, give it some more texture and a little bit of a natural look. So kind of like that. So it's not, you know, it's not that dark yet. Oh, it's so hot in here. Oh. I had AC in here for a while, but my kids my kids always want the garage door open so they can play outside. So it's like you're fighting a losing battle, basically. So I just sweat it out. It's not humid here, which helps. I mean, most of the time it's not anyway. So somewhat tolerable but it is so hot it, it's like it doesn't even matter so I'm just going along the high side just skipping the areas that are yellow pretty much okay so now we have our green, green, okay, with our orange. So I'm going to clean this out for now. And now I'm going to try some stuff that might or might not work. So if it doesn't work, I get a backup, and then I can always just scrap it. And usually it takes me a couple different tries to get the colors the way I want. So I'm probably going to screw up at least one of these. Oh. So this is rubbing alcohol, and I'm using it to clean any of the dark green residue off the side of the bowl with a disposable paintbrush. Um, the alcohol will take any, it'll take paint right off. You can even use it if you spill it somewhere, like if you get it on your clothes and you take a little rubbing alcohol, if you're really fast, you can sometimes get it out of your clothes. Um, okay, let me pop back to comments in case I missed somebody. 
I know I do. I need an assistant. Only mid seventies there during the day, mid fifties at night. Yeah, but when it's like January and it's minus twenty there and it's thirty five here. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's there's ups and downs to living everywhere is the the bottom line. If I do ever miss your question, guys, don't be afraid to PM me. I am happy to help if I can. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit of white uh, texture, and this may or may not work. So I'm going to shade over top of it. Once I get, I'm going to use bone, actually. And um, we're just going to kind of make, I don't know if I'm going to end up doing this in the long run or not, but we're going to try it on at least one of these and see what happens. So I've got some texture stencils from... Um, Anarchy Models, thank you, couldn't think of that. And this one is called Less Modeled Micro. Less Modeled Micro. Creature Features 11, Anarchy Models. All right, so this has um, some white texture around the face area and, um, hang on a second, I gotta pop up here, I'm gonna close. I don't think anybody's watching on YouTube. One person. No? There's three of you on YouTube. I know you can see a lot closer up on Facebook. So I'm just going to do a little bit of texture right around the face area. You can't even see that. Okay, let's try this again. And then right along the top here too. Yeah, it's it's really hard to see. Like you probably won't even be able to see it. So I'm gonna go a little bit heavier this time on this side and see if I can do If I can get it to show up a little better, sort of. You can clean these um also with just like soaking soaking them in alcohol and they will clean right up so i just did some around the face area um i'll show you in a second you don't have to be super accurate with this so um along the face area and then the top of the head area just like that i don't know if you can see that even on youtube but you can sort of see it probably on facebook all right, I'll try it on one of these warts too, and then um, I may or may not do it again. They just have like, I, I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about, like the claws usually have those white dots on them too. Every time I try to do the white dots, I end up not liking it, and I end up omitting it. <laughs> so we'll see. So I put some on the on the wart too. All right, that was fun. Let's clean that out. I don't know. I think partially the reason I don't do those is because the the amount of texture. I don't know. They just don't they don't show up that well, and I don't feel like they add all that much the design. I don't really know how to explain what I'm trying to say, but I think you guys get the gist. Okay, so let's do, the first thing I'm going to do here is the lines, and that'll give me a template of where to put the rest of my shading at. So normally you would do your lines last, but when I do these, I don't because I need to know where to shade. So I'm going to put some brown in here, and yes, I'm going to use brown and not black. And I don't want it to be super dark or super thick, so it's going to be kind of tricky. It's a lot easier with lacquer because this brown sprays like poop. It looks like poop in it. Sprays like poop. So here is here's my two five. So I made this stencil myself on my Silhouette Cameo uh, vinyl cutter, if I can find it, and um, 
So there it is. This is the stencil. I drew this with my Apple pencil and then I cut it with my Silhouette Cameo. It's been used a, like a lot of times. Um, but I use the program called Autodesk Sketchbook. So I'm just going to line the stencil up with like the bill right here on the point of my stencil. And then the tail will get that last little uh, section. And then I'm going to try and go fairly close to the, the bottom of the belly and then right up to the bottom of the tail. And then from a distance, I'm just going to spray straight on. I'm holding it down with my thumb so I don't move it and I'm holding it like this. So um, I'm holding the clip and I'm holding the stencil right against, I don't want you Siri. And I probably just moved it. I turned my hand too many times. Stop. I have Apple Watch and my, my Siri goes off all the time without me doing anything to make it happen. Okay, so there is, there's your craw um, lines right there. Okay, and then I'll freehand that around the back side, but we're going to flip it over. Make sure your stencil's dry before you flip it over, or that, or make two different stencils, one for each side. This is not dry, so I'm just going to hit it with a hairdryer real quick because I don't want to get any smears on the other side of my lure because that would be tragic. My son is in the background whining about something that's not working. So if you can hear him, I'm super sorry. He's a little dramatic. And I can't see your comments again. Oh, from rubbing on the rocks. Is that what happens? Bye, Jake. I'm sure you're already gone. Hey, Richard. Oh, your son's wedding. How exciting. I didn't even know he was getting married. I did not know. So I'm kind of just peeking at this from the back to see if they, if it lines up with the other side. And I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to take a peek over here and that looks good. So there's the other side. So if you can hold it really steady, that's the easiest way to do a stencil. So now I'm just going to freehand across the back and I'm going to draw, I'm going to connect the lines from side to side and I'm going to do that freehand. So wish me luck. I'm using a 0.5. Uh, a lot of people are shocked when I tell them that, but if you get really close, it's not that hard to draw a fine line with the 0.5. It's all about trigger control. You got to be really careful how much paint and air you get at the same time. You get a feel for it over time. You got to be patient and take your time. Get to know how much pressure you need, how close you need to be to the lure to get it to create a line. So there's your freehand fine lines. So you can do it. And these aren't even that good. I know people that are way better than me. So um, it's definitely doable, though. Oh, right. Come on, screen cross. Brad, uh, PM me about, yeah, I have a glow-in-the-dark lure. PM me. Um, I will see what I can do. Okay. Uh, thank you, Jason. Hello, Travis. Nice on vacation. All right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pop back to my picture here for a second. All right, I'm going to do a little bit of brown texture now on the body here because they're on this on this picture. See, that's kind of splotchy. The brown and green and, and orange is kind of splotchy. 
So I'm going to just take a stencil that I have that is also from Anarchy Models called, um, this is splotchy and it is um, the large one, whatever that means. So um, I'm going to go from a distance and I'm just going to mist it on there. I'm not going to like make it very dark, but I'm just going to add a little bit of salt and salt on here. Just kind of like that. So you get a little bit, it's not, it's not looking like the picture, but you're just trying to kind of mimic it. You're not going to get it to look exactly like it. I'm not that good. And I don't have that kind of time, honestly. The amount of time it would take to make it look exactly like the picture would be remarkably unreasonable. So my apologies there, but that's not happening. So now this looks really yellow. It doesn't really look very orangey. Um, and I need to do uh, some of that reddish brown. Do you see that reddish brown uh, on the tail? So I'm gonna switch to like a reddish color and we're gonna do a little bit of texture and then I'll finish it off with shading when I, where I don't think the color is right. You know what, I never did the board and the, I never did that to the board, any of that stuff. Oh, I'm just gonna move on. Oh, no, I'm not. Cause I was gonna do the, the bill of the, I was gonna do claws. If I get that far. So let's real quick do this on the warp. I was gonna do a clause on the bill if I had time on this. So again, I'm gonna I might I wish I had my smaller one. I only have the tiny one here. Let me grab a different stencil real quick. Oh no, I don't. Okay. This is a little bit smaller version. It's really dirty, so the the um, openings are even smaller than normal. I really need to soak this in lacquer thinner. It will survive lack right there, by the way. If you really just want to get the job done fast, just throw it in some lacquer right thinner. I'm sure that um, Brian at Anarchy Models would not endorse that, but I've done it because I had to know, and it works, and it didn't disintegrate it. So it did not disintegrate the lure or the stencil. I'm sorry. So that was good. Here's a 1.5 version of that same stencil. This is on cardstock, though. Um, I just, I made it before I was really using um, stencil material. I was just using cardstock. But I've kind of switched to... Now, I'm not going to do this one. I'm going to move this back a little bit because the word is really small. So I'm going to skip that line when I stencil this. And then I'll add it later. I think I have another 1.5 stencil that's a little smaller than this one, but I don't know where it is, so we're not going to waste our time looking for that. I'll just make this work for now and figure it out later. So same thing, I'm just holding it against the lure. Yeah, so this stencil is not quite as pretty as the other ones. The lines are a little rougher because it's been kind of like... I don't know, Jack with too many times, I guess. And then I'm going to move that top line back. So I'm going to line this up behind the eyeball. The eyeballs on the um, wart are really big. So um, you need to leave more room. So that looks a little bit better. So now it's behind the eye. See what I mean? If you did it the way that the stencil was, it wouldn't have been behind the eye. It would have been like, I don't know, right across the eye basically. And that would have been bad. So I'm gonna try and line this up the best I can here. I'm just trying to line up the first line with the, the first line on the other side, as best as I can. And then I'll give it a spray here. Okay, let's hope for the best. It's a little bit lighter, but that looks pretty good too. Okay, now um, let me do this front face line and then I'll uh, join these all up together. This is a little bit too light on this side right here. It's not even work. I hate this sepia. Okay, that's better. Sorry. The delay there. 
I was just fixing something that didn't look right. Okay, so there's that side down. So I'm just going to join this across the back. Got a little tip dry, so again, you can just kind of pull it off with your fingers or a paper towel or whatever you want to use. All right. This is being really temperamental, and that looks really bad. This isn't spraying very good, and I got a big blob on top of this. I'm doing the express version of this just so you can see the claws. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of mistakes on the back of this, so I'm going to have to fix them or just redo it or whatever. But um, just so you can see the claws, I'm going to finish that one. So now I'm going to switch to um, my burnt umber. And I'm probably going to add a little bit of red to it to get this color that's kind of like um, a sienna type color. And we're going to do some texture on the back and some shading. So I have um, burnt umber, detail burnt umber, which is a wicked by Createx color. It is a reddish brown. And then I'm going to make it a little redder with some candy apple red candy pigment. This is Auto Air uh, candy apple red. I'm going to add a drop of that to my umber and then a little bit of reducer and I'm going to stir. And then I'm just going to put a little dot of this on a paper towel to see what it looks like. And I need more red. So I'm going to do one more drop, stir, drop. We're getting closer, but not quite there. So one more drop, and then I'm going to call it good. All right. And a little tiny bit more reducer. It's getting kind of thick. And then we're going to do some shading and some texture. So <laughs> my son's throwing a bit. Okay, so I'm going to spray this a little bit just to make sure I get to the, the paint that's mixed, you know, because whatever's whatever you poured in the cup first is what's going to come out first, even if you stirred it, because it'll get down into the barrel a little bit. So when you first spray it, you're going to get that umber just by itself. Does that make sense? So you always want to spray it on something else before you spray it on your lure. Okay. I'm going to do um, basically the back side of each of these lines, except for the front one. So I'm just shading right along the back side of each of these lines. So it's going to take me just a couple minutes here, a couple, I don't know how long it's going to take. My gun's spraying like garbage, so at this rate, it'll take me four years. Now if I pull that off, that's going to go everywhere. Sorry, my pieces aren't coming apart very nicely because I haven't, I don't disassemble my gun very often. So uh, all that stuff starts to stick together after a while. So this is pretty thin, so I'm just going to be real careful spraying this. And I'm just, I'll show you what I'm doing here in a second. Now this picture doesn't have red on every section, but I'm going to do it anyway. Just to give it, it, you know, it adds a little bit more color. You know, it makes it look a little bit better. So it's almost like an exaggerated version a little bit. And it looks more uniform that way. My son is currently banging against the um, storage closet right over there because he's mad about something and I'm not paying attention to him. And I don't know where Chris is right now. He's in quite the mood today. Glorious. And that just exploded. 
And that just exploded too. I'm having a rough day, guys. Honey, can you can you go find dad? I can't really help you right now. This is um, really backfiring on me right now. I'm really kind of not happy. It's not spraying good. Sorry. This is spraying like majorly horribly right now. So. I'm doing this right now, like these little pulses of paint, because my gun is not spraying very smoothly, and this is the only way I can get it done without it running. They're workarounds. This is also candy pigment, and I probably shouldn't have thinned it as much as I did. Um, it looks a lot thicker, though, than it is. But it's not a it's not a color I've used before. Okay, so now I've got the lines across the back. Behind each of the brown, there's the red now, and I'm gonna put some um, some red texture along the back and sides. And I'm gonna use a stencil that's from Art Tool. It's um, made by Iwata, basically. Um, they have a bunch of these little stencils you can buy on Amazon or wherever. I think. Uh, Coast Airbrush has them, I think. They're called um, Hex, uh, FX, something FX. I don't know. Somebody else can chime in and tell you what it is if they know off the top of their head. But I'm just going to look for a spot where there's like a lot of little, like really small dots here. And then I'm just going to shade in some areas um, right along the back and sides with some red dots. This is just spraying like crap. So bad. Hang on. I gotta figure this out. I'm gonna clean this out. Hang on a second. I'm gonna switch guns because I think maybe that's my problem is this is not clean enough. So if you guys will bear with me just one second, I'm gonna I'm gonna get a brand new one that's just been cleaned out. But I can't leave paint in this one either, or it'll just get worse. So Hey, Matt, how's it going? I'm going to pop back over to Facebook. Um, I was just looking at my picture that whole time. So I'll pop back and see what you guys are doing. Again, if you guys, um, I'm going to be doing a, um, a giveaway show in conjunction with Sugar Tick Custom Lures. I am just waiting on my care package from Shane to do some giveaways and I'll do some giveaways of my own stuff, too, and I'll paint a lure that he sends me. I don't know what he's going to send me, but we'll see. Um, I'm going to switch guns here because this one is spraying like garbage. This might not look clean, but it's been cleaned out, I promise. Watch it. It's going to spray like shoot. I try not to swear. I know somebody, some of you guys just keep there watching. See, that still looks dirty, but we're going to just try it, okay? <sighs> okay, it doesn't look like it's spraying straight, but you know what? I tried it anyway. I probably need to replace all my needles, honestly, and probably need to... Uh, I need to replace some stuff at this point. Okay, so I'm going to try this without reducing it and see what happens. I'm probably going to hate. I'm going to need a little bit actually because I don't even think it's going to spray. So I'm just going to do a tiny bit. All right, everybody cross your fingers. I couldn't deal with that spray. This isn't going to spray much better. I'm starting to think it's the paint.
I'm gonna make it work. I'm sorry. My problem. Uh, thanks, guys. Hey, TJ, how's it going? Well, uh, thanks, TJ. You're too kind. TJ's like one of the one of the great. So means a lot to hear that from him. TJ does like some great artwork that's not even lures even. He can do some crazy spray paint art and stuff. It's really cool. So this is, yeah, it's spraying like complete garbage. So I apologize, guys. At this point, I don't know if it's the paint or my brush or what, but it's just not going well. It doesn't look too bad, though. So, um, where do the Y's? Don't use old paint. I'm going to go back to the old reliable Awada and see if that is better. This is embarrassing. Yeah, that's all jacked up. All right. Anyways. I'll revisit that later. For time's sake. Oh, much better. Okay, maybe I just need to clean better. So, uh, again, I'm just trying to add texture and we're going to get there. All right, so this is going much better now. So, I guess to all of you who I swore by Badger with, uh, the Awada is definitely um, is winning tonight. I use both, honestly. I use um, the Badger Patriot is usually really good, but I use it so much. I think it's just dirty, and it's my own fault. I was using it today, and it was fine. And then I get on my show, and it's terrible. <laughs> of course, it's terrible when I get on my show, because that's my look. Okay, so now we've got some good texture. Um, this part still looks like butt, but I'm going to fix it, so it'll be okay. So now I'm going to lay down a little bit of red on the sides of the eyes. See you later, Brad. I'm sorry if I missed missed you saying you were leaving. Have fun fishing. Yeah, not spring straight. There's probably something stuck on the needle. Um, okay, it's all right. So I'm going to put um, a little red line, uh, like I'm going to spray some red from the back of the eye, okay? So like right along the eye up to this first line, okay? So from like here to here, and it's going to be really, really small. But these are the small details that make everything look so good. So the cool thing about these stencils is you'll get a little overspray onto the stencil behind it when you do these edges, and it looks kind of cool. So then I'll do this on the other side too. You don't have a lot of space to work with on the wiggle wart, so this is a lot easier on a bigger lure, but once you get it down, you can do it on either one. So I got it on both sides there, and then I'll do like a spot on the nose just to kind of bring it all together in the on the front so we've got that texture on the nose and then I'll do um, some um, shading so you know what actually honestly this line should have been dark green I don't know if I would do that green though so technically on the picture this line here that I got all mucked up is supposed to be green if you do it like the picture but I don't know if I'm really going to do that. But I'm going to switch back and finish this square bill that I kind of
kind of jacked up earlier. So we're going to do the same stuff. This is much easier to work with when you're practicing because there's so much more space. The um, board is so small. I should know better than to even try and do that on a live show when I haven't done those. I have done this design before, but not with these colors. So, or a similar design, but not with these colors. So one by one, just put a little texture on the sides and on the back. Um, it's time consuming. So if you don't like spending time on details, yeah, it's not gonna be the design that you wanna paint. But once you get it down, you know, it doesn't take as long as the first few times you do it. So yeah, it's after a hundred of these though, you really are sick of it. Like nobody's business. I do production, so you know I sell on my website and I do a lot of lures at once. And so um, I'm just for hours painting one design, sometimes days, depending on how complex it is and how many I'm doing. So after a while, you're like, I never want to paint that again, ever. Okay, so I'm going to do some, some along the nose now that I've got that done. These didn't, like, come out the greatest, honestly. These red shaded areas kind of look like poo-poo. So I'm going to go from the back of the eye again. Uh, right up the side, and I'm just going to shade along that line, letting the overspray go into those little tiny areas of the stencil right above the line. We're just going to kind of make a messy line right there. Just like a little messy line, and I'll do the other side. And I'm kind of just doing it diagonally from like the front of the eye and back, and you just look for like a semi straight. Uh, you don't have to do the same on both sides. You can kind of mix it up so it's not symmetrical. So somewhat symmetrical, but not perfect, you know. So I'm just using a different little piece of stencil there. So now I've got the other side there so you can see both of them. And then I'll add just a little bit of a kind of dot on the nose to kind of connect the whole design together in the middle. So just like that, basically. And then um, next, what are we going to do next? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, they, they, there's a crack on a lot of craws, like up the side of their, their um, first, like the thoracic plate. I don't know if that's what it's called, but my intuition tells me that I learned something in science class in high school. Um, and uh, so that might be close to the right name. So I'm going to find a curved area of the stencil and I'm going to line it up in the middle of that big section like this. Usually right along the gill plate on the 2.5 is the right spot, somewhere around there. And I'm going to, again, trace along the edge of that stencil. And then you just kind of get like a, a rough line up the side like that. And it doesn't look like a crack, but you know, you're just mimicking. You're just kind of mimicking it. You're not trying to make it look exactly the same as the picture. Enough to fool a bath, but to look really pretty at the same time is the goal. All right. So now we've got it looking pretty good so let's do some belly on that one and we got to do some shading still uh of, with some brown um and i'm probably going to use like a, uh i'm still going to do have to make some of these spots a little more orange and i might grab another color that i haven't used yet Actually, I have this one color. Is this it? Candy orange. I might use that still. 
There was one more color I had that I thought I had it. Either. Hang on one second. I'm going to look at my bucket right here. It'll just take me a second. No, that's the same one. Okay, yeah, never mind. My memory is failing me. I think this sunset color is the one actually that I was thinking of. So, um, this is um, not sunset, I'm sorry. This ca uh, candy pigment, orange pigment. So, I'm going to put some of this in here. And I'm just going to shade some areas um, along the tail with a little more of this, like orange, to make it a little darker. This is almost fluorescent. So, You can always shade over it with brown if it looks like way too bright. So there's a bit of a way out if it sucks. So I'm just gonna go kind of dot some areas along the tail and just brighten them up. There's a little bit of an unevenness to um, the colors here. So maybe I'll just go, I'm just gonna fill in like the very, very bottom. See the very bottom where the gill plate ends? I'm going to just shade those oranges right there at the very bottom. That looks kind of good, actually. All I'm doing is making stuff up, you guys. This is all it is, is just making stuff up. For real. I dig it. I do, I dig it. Okay. Patience, I'll show you in a second. So all I did is shade a little bit of orange at the very bottom there, like on the tips. So you got a little more of that orangey color. Do you see that? Yeah, I like it. Say hi, Gray. Hi. Can you see him? He's right in the fridge back there. I don't know what. Are you good? Are you? He's fearing. He's fearing dad. Oh my goodness. On camera. He sent his six-year-old son for a beer. My dad did that when I was good. Dad, if you're watching, I just called you out. He usually says hi, but I haven't seen him say hi. But I used to have big press beers all the time. I don't drink anymore, but I miss so I miss that opportunity. Okay, so again, just a little bit of the orange shading on the bottom, right? Then it comes up into that like yellowish. I like it. We're getting a little bit more, you know, dimension. Every one of these colors I add is just more work. So you have to decide if you want to put that much time into it, you know, when you decide to do these designs. And, um, you know, if you sell your stuff, if you're watching your painter, um, you know, part of it is like how much time you put in versus how much you sell your stuff for. So if we sell it so cheap like that, all you can really justify is putting down like three colors in like a very simple shad design, then I don't know. I mean, you get what you pay for, right? And it's because it takes us so much time to do this stuff. So um, you really have to appreciate the art, I think, to understand why we have to charge what we charge. And I don't really charge that much, honestly, compared to some people like TJ, probably. But he's like amazing, so. Yeah. One of the great. So I kind of jacked this line up here on this board, so it's not going to look very good, but I'm going to finish it anyway. I'll probably sell it like as a um, mistake lure. I'm not going to redo it. It's too much work, and I think some people still appreciate it as is. I'm just having paint issues today. I 
And I usually have these problems because lacquer dries so fast that you don't have the running issues. And so um, when I come on here live, it's always uh, it's always a little bit frustrating because I'm going back to what I'm not used to. So all I'm doing is kind of shading a point here on the head and then uh, making it, it looks bad because, um, again, because of how I did the, I screwed up on the top. I'm just shading the this middle part a little browner and then um, around the nose. I'm just gonna shade it a little darker so it's more of a um, mucky color than a bright green. Anytime your colors are too bright, you can always come back with sepia and shade them in a little bit so they look a little bit like dirtier or whatever. And then you'll get um, the green pumpkin or look. Moss green is generally pretty, but um, you have to put it on pretty heavy for it to get like very um, deep green looking. If you do it light like this, then it's gonna be more bright. So again, all I'm doing is shading that line, you know, that they have kind of up the back here. In this picture, it's almost shadow-like looking, but you can see what I'm talking about, right? Up the back there, and I'm just making that, it'll look better on this lower than it looks on that wart because I didn't screw up the paint on this one like I did on that one. And then it comes kind of to a triangle almost a little bit on the nose area. And then I'm just going to darken down the lines across the back in front of the red a little bit just to give it a little more pop. That ran everywhere, but I think it was This uh, sepia is so light, it's so easy to overdo it because it's so hard to tell how much you're putting down sometimes. Okay, that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna just darken this stuff up a little bit to make it look a little bit more swampy, I guess. I gotta wipe off some stick dry, hang on. But if you're if you notice your, sometimes if you notice your airbrush is not spraying very smoothly, you need to clean your needle off because there's usually dry paint on your needle and it's making it um, hard to spray. I'm spraying all over my iPad too, this poor iPad. Okay, so there we have Kind of an orangey, browny, greeny lure. I'm going to do the bellies on these, and then I'll do the claws and the eyeballs. Got a bug on me. So you kind of try and get in between the plates when you're doing the belly, and I'm just wrapping a card around this. And then just spray the card and let the overspray make the line, and it'll make it look like a shadow. And then just, I'll show you, I'm just moving it up every time in between the plates and it'll just give you the, uh, the belly sections. Just like that. So you get the belly sections and that's all I'm doing to get the belly sections. And those look pretty sweet, I think. Okay, now this will just get a black um, eye, just like a, um, uh, 3D eye, but then the wart will get a black painted eye. And usually when I do, um, these, I just use like a circle, um, dot stencil or I freehand them depending on what I feel like doing at the time. I'll grab a stencil for this one so we can make it look kind of, kind of crisp. So there's your belly lines on the wart. And then let me grab a pencil here. 
and I'll switch to black. What do I have in here? Brown. Let me do my claws in brown first, and then I'll do the eyeballs. So I'm going to take this um, off, and we're going to do some reddish brown. No, not reddish brown, sorry. They're mostly brown claws, actually. So this is frog tape, by the way. I use frog tape. It's the only stuff I can stand. It doesn't leave residue. It sticks really well, but it's not hard to peel off. So I made this stencil a while ago, and I just found it. I cut it with the scissors like a long time ago, and they're just um, like plugs. So I'll just line this up like this. I'll stick my thumb here, and I'll press it down, and then I'll cover the edges. Wait, I might need to clip it on actually because it's kind of flimsy. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut, I'm going to make this smaller. Really high tech. And then I'll take an uh, alligator clip and I'll just clip it on right at the tip here with the corner of the clip. And I'm going to cut this a little, a little bit more, sorry. So you kind of just improvise, right? So it's clipped on there. Now with the alligator clip, just with the point of the clip, so it's not covering any of the stencil, and that'll keep it in place. And then I'll stick my thumb here so that it stays down while I'm spraying, okay? So let's do a little brown shadow and uh, see how it looks. Get this stuff, that's not quite centered. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to hair dry this, and we're, we're not going to do anything really fancy with these. I know some, uh, there's one guy, Terry Morgan, who does beautiful, beautiful claws. Um, I've never really gotten into incredible detail on work claws. Let me see what this looks like when I take it off. So that's just a really basic claw on the on the bill. Um, it's light. You can make it darker if you wanted to, but that's how easy that is. And then let me do the eyeballs, and I'll be all done with that. And then, the, like I said, the two five will just get um, epoxy eyes. I'll pop back to the comments so I can see if you guys have any questions at the end here. You think it looks better like it is? You mean before I shaded the brown or without the claws? Okay, I'm just checking comments. You guys are very quiet tonight. There's probably not very many people watching. I can't really see it, so. A lot of times the video doesn't really work um, for me. So I'm just gonna take one of these circles. This is just like an image I found online. It wasn't from anybody who sells lures, so don't ask that. It was just some random like stock image I found. And I'm going to line it up with the, you know, the round part of the wart eye. And then I'm just going to spray directly on. And then you get your black eyeball. Black eyeball. So sometimes this doesn't want to focus. It's really hard to see on YouTube. I don't know if my um, computer, like if the image is for everybody else on YouTube, look like they do on my cheap ass laptop, but, or if they look different for you, but it doesn't look very good. It's hard to see on my laptop. Okay, so there's your. And everybody asks me what I sign my lures with. So let's get this out of the way in case anybody's watching and they want to know. As I can't find it all of a sudden. 
I use a pit artist pen in extra small. Is that it? Nope. Is this it? Nope. There it is. Okay. So it's a Faber Castell pit artist pen. It'll be backwards. I'm sorry on YouTube. This is what I use. So you just kind of got to make sure that it's flowing okay. And then I just go to like a clear spot, usually near the eyes somewhere. This is not one right. Okay, there we go. And I just give it my little signature. It writes really tiny, so you have plenty of, uh, as long as you can write small, it's not a big deal to sign them and not take up a lot of space. I try to take up as little bit, as little space as I can. So I just kind of plop it into a corner there somewhere where it doesn't get covered up too much. So. Anyway, just let me know what you think of the color. If you think I should change anything about it, make it lighter, darker. I'll take any feedback you guys have. Um, you know, I'm making this stuff for you guys. So I want it to be something that everybody likes. And I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Don't forget to check out the um, the website, coloradocustomlures.com. Um, it's in the description. And I pinned it in the comments. And you can get 15% off anything in stock until Sunday night. Uh, with the code live live 15 in caps, all one word, um, and $50 and up orders ship free. So you guys, uh, thanks, Jenny. Appreciate that. Um, yes, thank you, Arthur. Very good advice there, too. Um, you guys have a great night. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you. Uh, I should be on next week. Uh, we're going to Monster Trucks. But it's at 2 o'clock, so we should be able to do the show next week, too. So I'm hoping to get jigs, you guys, and more plastics in um, over the winter. I think we're going to be doing them ourselves. Uh, I had somebody helping me. I think we're going to be doing them ourselves. So we'll see how much time we can spend on it. So I'm hoping to get some more of those things in. If you have any color requests or anything, just um, feel free to shoot those our way, too. So have a great night. Thanks all for watching.